Peace be with you. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we come together by his invite. He comes to us with this holy sacrament and, and uh, uh, word, yeah, word and sacrament as he brings to us the forgiveness. Of, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been up here, you know, uh, uh, giving us uh, uh, empowerment to be able to go forth and to serve him heart, body, soul, and mind. I'd like to welcome those who are visiting with us today. Uh, we have half of La Myra with us uh, today. Uh, to be able to celebrate the public recognition of the baptisms of Elena and of Peyton, and that will be taking place in the early part of our service. Uh, so uh, very glad to have you all back here again. I think the last time we were all together was the wedding a few, a few years back. And so uh, it's really good to be able to see all, no, Jackson's baptism, okay, exactly. So anyhow, very glad to be able to have you all with us as well as others who are visiting with us. We do pray God's blessing upon your worship and, uh, and, and the like. Visitors, if you would like to take and uh, 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 fill out the cards that you find in the pews, share with us your name and address, and in that way we can recognize your visit amongst us with a note of greeting. Members of the congregation, we would like very much for you to take also and uh, register. Uh, share with us the names of all family members who are in attendance. Should you be receiving the sacrament, please indicate that. Is that assist the elders and myself? Uh, and, oh, elders and myself. My gosh, how many years have we had an associate with us? The pastors and the elders with the soul care of our congregation. My apologies, Pastor Fitch, you know, as far as that goes. But anyhow, um, that's what we got going on there. There's a little bit of a confusion because those of you who are following the large print bulletins, the responses are not indicated as being sung. For those who are following along in the hymnal, the responses that are to be sung are indicated to be sung. So I sat together with uh, who is both the head elder as well as also the organist for today, and we made an executive decision, and that is just follow what the organist does, okay? <laughs> which means that we're going to be singing the responses as, as they are indicated, okay? And that'll really work out well. Taylor, who told you we were singing the Nunc Dimittis today? Glad, glad that you made the trip from Madison for worship today. Very glad about that, okay? He keeps me uh, very honest in regards to that, he and Nick, that we sing the proper Nunc Dimittis when it is, uh, uh, comes forward. In our prayers today, we are going to be lifting up prayers of comfort for some of our families who are in mourning. Some of you, or not all of you by now, might know the fact that our administrative assistant, Grace, her mother had died in the latter part of this week, and so it is that we will be uh, uh, remembering uh, the family in our prayers of sympathy. Also, Rick Starasta's mother, Shirley, I passed away. Her celebration of Life Everlasting took place in Ashland uh, uh, yesterday, and that's also the grandma to Josh. And so it is that uh, we're going to be remembering these families in our prayers. All right, I think that's enough for us to be able to have as an introduction. So let's go on ahead. I think you know this hymn. I'm pretty sure of it. Holy, 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 and we'll rise as we sing the fourth verse. May God richly bless us in our worship today.
the church, but it is very important for us to be able to celebrate that because there are times when it is that young ones need to be baptized and then we as the family of God are able to take and recognize that wonderful gift of grace that was given uh, in the baptisms that were performed. And so it is, congregation, you don't have all of the verbiage in front of you. I will let you know as to when you need to turn to a certain page in the hymnal. Actually, you can do that right now, page 270, and I'll let you know when we'll jump in there and be able to uh, make use of those uh, uh, parts uh, that are appropriate. Beloved in the Lord, from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and the love of the neighbor. Now, obviously, you were not at the hospital when it is that Elena and Peyton were baptized, but yet you have accepted responsibility to pray for these. Obviously, Elena, now home with the Lord, already receiving the completion of baptismal grace, but yet to be able to be remembering her and giving thanksgiving to God for her. So, Crystal Geiger, Nick Geiger, Nadine Geiger, and Tim Botin, is it your intention to serve Peyton, Mary, and Elena Sue as sponsors in the Christian faith? Then answer by saying yes with the help of God. God enable you to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with the grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. I'm going to put this on since we're in close proximity. All right, there we go. And so the first thing that I want to be able to do is to place upon you, Peyton, Mary, Botine, the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and also upon your heart to mark you that you are one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Now, congregation, if you would please rise. Page 270. And together we will pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Now, Peyton nor Elena are able to take and answer the questions that we will now uh, speak on their behalf. And so to you, Peyton, you, uh, do you renounce the devil? Respond by saying, yes, I renounce him. All of us together, all at Susanna. Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works and answer by saying, yes, I renounce them? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways and answer by saying, yes, I renounce them? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and answer by saying, yes, I believe? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Then answer by saying, Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints? the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, then answer by saying, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. The congregation may be seated. <coughs> Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. 
Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. The Word of God also teaches us that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. The Apostle Peter had declared, Baptism now saves you, and the promise of salvation is for you and your children. In baptism, God puts his name on us with his water and his word, so that there be no doubt that he was surely his by all that Christ has won for us through his saving death and resurrection. Now, Peyton Mary Botin and Elena Sue Botin were unable to be baptized in the presence of the congregation by a called and ordained minister of Christ. That we may have certainty that they were baptized on October the 26, 2021 by their father, Jeremy Botin, with water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you have come to attest to their baptism in the presence of the congregation. And so I ask you, Jeremy, before the Lord in his church, I ask you, was this baptism administered as has been reported and answered by saying yes? yes? The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace and life everlasting. Amen. I had shared with Jeremy that how wonderful it is that God was able to use him as one of his children to do for his children what God would have wanted to have done. And to be able to have the privilege to baptize those little ones not even minutes out of the womb, right? And on their baptismal certificates is also listed the uh, nurse that was a witness to the baptisms as far as that goes as well. And so, Jeremy, God made use of you to do good work. And I, I you know, and you, as we have talked off and on, the, the, uh, us and I know Pastor Fitch over at your home as well, the good news is the Elena is not with us here today. She has received the completion of faith, a miracle that God worked in her heart through you in God's word and his means of grace. And so it is a wonderful celebration for Elena as it is also a celebration. Hey, look at you, Peyton, you're smiling at me. Yeah, that's all right, fantastic. She says, good, I'm not getting watered down again. <laughs> so if you'd like to go ahead and light the candles, then I'll go ahead. To, to you, the uh, godparents, I don't care who's here, we'll do the two ladies. These are baptismal certificates to serve as a symbol that indeed Elena and uh, Peyton were baptized and have been washed and now bear the robes of Christ's righteousness. You here on earth for your sister, fully clothed, fully restored. What a wonderful blessing that God has worked. Now, uh, here we go, gentlemen. Try to hold it as straight as you can. Okay, you wanna be able to hold that? There you go, fantastic, okay. And so, for the Godfathers, Receive that flaming light and let it be a reminder that your daughters have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Elena lives in the presence of the very light face to face. And someday, Peyton, and hopefully a long time from now, that indeed you also, as well as all baptized children, will be before the light of the world, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go ahead, if you will. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. We pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you for your graciously having preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Peyton, Mary Botine, and Elena Sue Botine the new birth and holy baptism. You have made them members of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs of your heavenly kingdom. 
We humbly implore you that as they have now become your children, you would keep them in their baptismal grace, and that according to your, uh, according, uh, to your honor of your holy name, and finally all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of these children and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism that they may share eternally with their children the salvation that you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, since you govern and sanctify the whole Christian church by your Holy Spirit, hear our prayers for all her members and mercifully grant that by your grace we may serve you in true faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. All right, come here, little one. I think this will be the first time I actually get to hold her. All right. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I know that mask. I understand. But I've been told I look better with it on. <laughs> Our newest sister. And if indeed you have seen Peyton, you have also seen her sister, Alicia, uh, Elena, on account of the fact they were identical twins. All right, I got to walk over here. This thing, you guys want to blow those candles out, it'll be easier to put us in the box. Here we are. See, look at us. She's already praising God. Just sing it. She knows the Lutheran hymns. You can hear it. All right. Let's go ahead and sing the hymn of welcome as we go forward in regards to that. All right. Here are the baptismal certificates. These are the boxes to go with the candles. If you want to put those in the box, that would be great. This is for the whole of your family. Some other booklets for you. Okay. And then the baptismal benediction. You can decide who's is Elena's. Who's is okay. I'm sure Elena's not going to break it with you, okay? And again, that's good for everybody. Yeah, thanks for letting this happen. All right. And here's the extra bulletins, all right? You got the boxes? Okay, perfect. We're all set there. Okay. been informed that we're out of bulletins and so if it is that you are willing to share a bulletin would you please hold it up we'll have the ushers come on in grab those extras and then if you need one then also hold up your hands okay all right we'll just give a few moments for this man what a wonderful blessing that the Lord has brought to us okay we have an extra one up here yet Pete if someone else needs to have a copy please don't be shy 
All right? I know that as Lutherans we have the liturgy memorized, but that was in German. This is the English service that we're doing. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for helping out with that. <coughs> as the confession of sins was uh, as a part of the baptismal rite with the renouncing of the devil in all his works and in all his ways, at this point in time, I'd invite the congregation to rise. And for those following in the hymnal, page 189, we will continue with the salutation and the collect of the day. All right? So again, page 189. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family and the church continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The first lesson for today is taken from Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes, eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 12 through 20. Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise and join our voices and sing in the triple hallelujah. Again, we'll be singing the responses as is in the hymnal. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory. 
One occasion, while the crowd was passing uh, in on uh, oppressing on in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats of the lake by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at the Lord's knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their nets, uh, their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Having made confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as a part of the baptismal rite, you may be seated and we'll join our voices in singing the hymn of the day as is indicated.
Mercy and his peace are yours in Christ Jesus, dear friends. Our text is the Psalm, Psalm 138, which uh, is the appointed psalm for this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. We'll take a look at that as we walk through the sermon. You may be seated. I failed to mention in making the various presentations that also presented for Elena and also for uh, Peyton was. Uh, two baptismal quilts, or what we call baptismal quilts. They are with great love put together by members of the congregation, those who do knitting, and they put those together, and so they also were presented in reference to that. So I failed to make mention of that uh, as a part of that rite. What we have before us today is a psalm of praise. And it actually is the conclusion. The Psalms can be broken up in various portions, each having a type of theme connected to the portion. This is Psalm, Psalm 138, closes out one of those sections. I forget exactly which of the Psalms begins this section, but nevertheless, it is there. This section of Psalms, including Psalm 138, uh, takes and reminds the reader, the one professing the words or speaking forth the words, reminds them that indeed what had been focused on prior to, and that is that God's love endures forever. It then also prepares the way with the beginning of Psalm 139. It introduces the next theme, and that is God's wonderful, bounteous love. But here we have this psalm, Psalm 138, a psalm that by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, David pens. And it is a psalm of praise. The theme that we have before us, I will praise you for your love and grace. The text is printed out for you. Follow along the first three verses. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. Thus far our text. David's song of praise. What do we draw out of these three verses? First and foremost, that David praises God with his whole heart. Now that kind of recalls in the back of our mind the summary to the first table of the Ten Commandments. Commandments 1, 2, and 3. You shall, uh, you shall worship the Lord your God with all your heart. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And as is also included in the Gospels, with your might. This is a wholehearted, full word of praise that flows from David. He goes on to say, before the gods. Now this is a very interesting thing, all right? For those of you who want to get into the intricacies of the Hebrew language, here's a good place to get involved in. And so far as the fact that gods could be referring to as it normally does to false gods, therefore the small g, all right? However, in this psalm, based on its context, King David is reminding that not only is God greater than he, but that he is greater than all other kings. And we'll see that in just a few moments 
as David invites these other gods, these earthly kings, to also join in in praise. He speaks of the dead, steadfast love and God's faithfulness, the reason for the praise. And that indeed God's word and also his name is exalted. What wonderful words of praise concerning Almighty God. What brings forth these words of praise? Well, David helps us to understand that. That when in the time of need, when it is that David had called out, God gave him strength of soul, strength of heart. What days might be being referred to here? How about the days under King Saul? David had already been anointed to be the next king, and King Saul saw every opportunity to destroy David, to kill him. And yet, Almighty God heard the prayers of David's heart. Almighty God gave strength of heart to David, and David's life was not taken by King Saul. Or how about the days of Absalom when civil war came into King David's kingdom? And so far as the fact that Absalom, his beloved son, rose up and sought to destroy his father, to take his father's kingdom from him by force. David cried out, and again Almighty God responded and delivered him. God delivered his servant. For this reason, David lifts up this psalm before us. And then verses 4 through 6. Take a look at that. Follow along if you would, please. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth, and they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Kings are invited to praise God. The so-called gods of the earth are invited to praise God. They have heard God's word. Now, maybe not directly. We need to be reminded of the fact that God places his people in an inherited land that was promised to Abram. And their location was key. In so far as the fact that they were surrounded by other nations who worshiped other gods. Israel was to be able to serve as a witness to the true God. And indeed, Israel was mightily blessed under the true God. And this was to serve as a magnet to draw people to know. And so for that reason, David says that they had heard God's word. And they're called to acknowledge the glory of Almighty God. And then in the last verse or so there, that kings who are haughty will be leveled. God's favor is upon the lowly, upon the humble. The haughty will learn from their, uh, will learn from their folly. What do I mean by that? When the kings of Israel obeyed Almighty God, he richly blessed them. When they demonstrated their humility, when they demonstrated that they were humble, when they looked to God and followed his decrees, God blessed them. But when the kings became, what would you want to say, prideful, when it is that they had led God's people away from the truth, when it is that they took glory unto themselves, God leveled them. Down. By the way, this also worked with other kings from other nations. The application would be this. You remember Sennacherib? He's not the cousin to the Mikrib. All right? The Sennacherib was the king of Assyria. And God gave him Israel. God gave him victory over Israel. And what did he do? He boasted about what he was able to do and how weak the God of Israel was. God leveled him. Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, 
followed in the same way. Even though God had allowed them victory over his own people to discipline them, Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar sang in pride of what it is that they were able to accomplish. And God leveled them as well. And so kings that are obedient, kings that are lowly and humble, they shall be blessed by God. But those who are not, they will learn from their folly. The last portion of the text. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. We get a little bit more detail from the introduction of the song. A little more detail as to why it is that David offers up words of praise. That in the midst of trouble, God had preserved his life. God had stretched out his hand and he delivered his servant David. I think especially, dear friends, that indeed when it is that David had sinned so boldly, committing the sin of adultery and then plotting the murder of uh, Bathsheba's husband Uriah, that God did not abandon him. God stood by him and through the prophet Nathan, called him to repentance, and David repented and was restored. God could have written him off, but he chose not to. He came after this one who was described as one who had a heart like God and restored him once again. God fulfills his purpose in trial and tribulation. God's purpose is not thwarted and the fact is, he does not forsake. He is faithful. And that is the story of the whole of the Old Testament. God's faithfulness from the time of the Garden of Eden to the time of the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. God's faithfulness despite the unfaithfulness of his people. So what's this got to do with you and me, called disciples of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, called disciples like David, like Isaiah, and like the first of the disciples as we heard how they were called? It's really quite interesting. When they are brought into relationship with the Lord, there's this overwhelming fishing trip that takes place. And as you know, with the close of the Gospel of John, what is the last major act that Jesus does to once again demonstrate to the disciples that God was with them. It's another overwhelming catch. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> another overwhelming catch of fish. Fact is, is like David, like Isaiah, like those disciples, we are called in the relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He stretches out. He comes to us. It's not a matter of us making a decision to follow him because truth to be told, reprobate man from the time of his uh, conception, from the time of birth, cannot accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, but rather rebel. Almighty God reaches down. And that's what we just celebrated once again. That's what we just recognized here once again. How it is that God, even for the sake of infant children, reaches down, creates faith in the heart, and that faith then receives the Holy Spirit. So that indeed for Elena and for Peyton and for all of us who have been baptized, brought into relationship with Almighty God by His work for His glory. And what a wonderful blessing. Like David, like Isaiah, like the first disciples, we are called to serve the Lord. That is our work. That is what he desires for us to do. To serve him heart, body, soul, mind, and strength. Almighty God is worthy of our praise even when there are times of trial and tribulation. I have to tell you, dear friends, I didn't like that COVID business. Not that I wasn't really, uh, wasn't all that sick, because I wasn't, okay? 
Interested enough that first week was really a trial run for what retirement might be like. <laughs> and I'm not all too eager about retirement. Uh, it's all right, you know, I had to learn some things through as far as that goes. I got actually tired of being tired and sleeping. But what really gnawed at me was this. I couldn't get to our homebound. Now some of you know that I'm very OCD when it comes to our homebound. I'm very zealous over that. I couldn't get to over half of our homebound and I felt bad about that. I would have called on Brother Fitch, but by golly, you know, birds of the feather flock together. He was out as well. I also felt bad because I was supposed to fill a pulpit for a man who was on vacation having accepted that task and was not able to do that. To do that. And I thought to myself, Lord, what in the world are you doing here? And the bottom line is, is that the Lord was teaching. And I have to echo words that were spoken by Pastor Fitch, I believe, last week, and so thankful for the Board of Elders. Our elders took on the task. And as Brian Holman had declared, as I watched the service on TV or on my phone, that's really weird, watching a worship service on your phone, you know? That was new for me. Many of you know how technologically skilled I am. Thanks be to God that I have a wife who knows how to figure those things out. But indeed, by the grace of God, worship was able to still have be held here. Because that's one of the things as pastors and elders that we are very adamant, and that is that worship will take place from this uh, facility. It will not be disturbed.